What's up guys? In this video, I wanna show you how to factor a quadratic trinomial with big. I mean, big numbers. Now, you probably haven't encountered too many problems like this for your factoring practice or on a test because it'd be difficult. Using the techniques that we usually teach inside the classroom, this would just be a horrible problem. One of my favorite techniques to have students learn for factoring quadratic is to use the guess and check method, right? Basically think about the combinations of numbers that are gonna multiply to give you a 50x squared, those are your first two terms, and then combine that with the combination of numbers that are gonna multiply to give you negative 30, you could put those right there, and then do the mental math in your head of their products to get a middle term of a 2x. And when you start going through all the combinations that you could possibly work with, this problem would be way too difficult. Now, the next technique that we could probably go through would be what we call the AC method. And whenever we have a quadratic, when my A is not equal to one, we usually like using the AC method. I teach my students the AC method, especially for the students that really, really struggle with doing a lot of mental calculations in their head. For most problems though, I do want them to be you know, understand the guess and check and to be able to do the math in their head. But I'm mean, in reality, I understand factoring can be difficult. And especially when you have difficult numbers, it could even be worse. So the AC method is very helpful because what that does is just says, well, take your first and your last term and multiply it. So you're gonna get some huge number here. But if it was a smaller quadratic, take those two numbers, put it here. So whatever that number is, your A times C, then go ahead and find the factors of those numbers that are going to add and subtract to give you two. It's just a nice simplified way of doing things rather than trying to do the mental math in your head. But the problem with doing the AC method when you have really big numbers is there's a lot of factors. Like, I don't even know what 56 times negative 30 is, and I don't even wanna think about trying to write down all the possible factors, or all the factors of that big number, and then try to see which one of those have a difference of two. That is just way too much work for me to do. So, I wanna show you something. And what we're gonna do is actually go back to a process that we learned a long time ago. And I think this is what I love about math the most, is some of the things that we learn in our earlier you know, years of school, we just kind of think it's boring, we think it's redundant, we're like, why are we learning this? Math is stupid, this is boring, we're never gonna use this in real life. And then here we are, using something that we previously learned that we didn't think had any relationship to what we're doing now, and now it actually helps us do a problem like this easier. What am I talking about? I'm talking about prime factorization. If you remember, whenever you take a composite number, you can always break it down into a product of its prime. So let's take 56. I can break that down into an eight times seven. I can further break down eight as going to be a four times two. And I can further break down four as a two times two. So I can rewrite this as seven times two times two times two. That is going to be the prime factorization of the number 56. For 30, forget about the negative, we're not dealing with negatives right now. For 30, I can break that up into six times five, and I can break down six as a three times two. So I can rewrite this prime factorization, or this, as three times two times five. Don't forget that, right? So in reality, whatever 56 times 30 is, I don't know, it's a big number. It's also the same thing as seven times two times two times two times three times two times five. This would be a lot easier for me to compute that big number if I wanted to. Because again, multiplying by two is pretty easy, right? Rather than trying to do that, or even doing the old school method that we learned, or the old school method of multiplying two digit numbers. But again, I'm not trying to go down that route anyways, guys, because I don't wanna find the two factors of whatever this huge number is. So what's nice about using the prime factorization is I'm actually gonna rewrite this in descending order, so seven, five, three, and then I have one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna, then I'm gonna write the prime numbers. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna try to group these prime numbers into two products that have a difference of two, right? And the reason why I'm looking for a difference of two is because whenever your last term is negative of a trinomial, whenever this is a difference, you're looking for the product of those two factors, when you combine them together, is gonna have a difference in your middle term. So for instance, like, here's what I was trying to verbalize, but I was like, ah, I couldn't even say it. If I had x squared, plus four x plus three, right? The factored form of this is going to be an x plus three times an x plus one, right? What we're looking for is what are the two factors of three that are going to add to give me four? If this was a negative, then both these two factors would be negative, right? But again, my, when my last number is positive, I'm looking for a combination of the two factors to right here. If, if, if I just change this to x squared minus two x minus three, now I'm looking for a difference of my two factors, right? So I'm taking three and one, the difference between three and one is two. So in this case, since it's a negative two, it'd be x minus three times x plus one. All right, let's get back to the fast stuff. So what I need to do is start thinking about, all right, how could I group these together into two products 
where they're gonna have a difference of two. So if I immediately start with seven times five, that's 35, right? But then three times two, or two times two times two is eight, and then times three is 24. 35 and 24 do not have a difference of two, okay? So then I say, all right, well, let's, how about if I group seven times three times two? Seven times three is 21, times two is 42, okay? And then if I multiply the rest of these, two times two times two is eight, times five is 40. Ah, look what I got, guys, 42 and 40. Do they have a difference of two? Yes, indeed they do. Now again, I need to determine which one of these is going to be positive, which one's gonna be negative. If I wanna add, do I wanna do 42 minus 40 or 40 minus 42? Well, again, since this is positive, I want this to be a negative, all right? Now, again, we're looking into the factored form, right? I'm not talking about solving. I wanna find the factored form. So what we're simply gonna do, though, is we are gonna write this as the solutions first and then rewrite it in the factored form. The kind of confusing part about this, and again, this is the only thing I do not like about this, because when we teach the AC method, a lot of times we go into finding these two values, plugging them in, and then using grouping or the box method to be able to find the factored form. I like that, but again, that's a little bit too long for me. I wanna do this fast. So here's a fast way, but I'm not gonna get into why we're doing this. This would come into understanding a little bit more of the AC method. If you can just remember it, this is where a lot of students kind of forget and they get the problem wrong. So I'm kind of hesitant always of showing you guys this tip. You, know, you can always take these two values and what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, what we teach in the AC method is once you found 42 and negative 40, you can rewrite this as 56 X squared plus 42 X minus 40 X minus 30. Then what you could do is factor by grouping. So you could change that to a negative, and then you go to the factor by grouping technique, which again, is not bad. But here's a way you can do that faster. All you're simply gonna do is take both of these terms, negate them, so this is x equals negative 42, and this equals x equals positive 40. Then you're going to divide them by your 56, your 56, which is your leading coefficient. And that's kind of like the same thing when you factor out by grouping, that's technically what you're doing. Right, you're factoring out the common term. Now, what do these have in common? Well, you think about this, you can't factor out a 56, but what does 56 and 42 have in common? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, what about a seven, right? You could divide the seven on top. If I divide seven on top, that's gonna be a negative six. 56 divided by seven is going to be a positive eight. Think about over here, if you factor out this seven, you're gonna be an eight x squared, uh, let's say plus a six, or seven, factor out a seven x. Seven x, eight x plus six. And then over here, what can I divide in the numerator and denominator? Well, that would be a positive eight, right? So eight divided by four, so that'd be x equals a positive five, and that's going to be over seven. If you think about it over here, you could factor out a negative five, and that's gonna leave you with a positive eight, negative eight, x minus six. Oh wait, that's a negative, yeah, you factor on negative, so it's a positive, there you go. Okay, now to rewrite this into this factored form, all I'm simply gonna do is multiply by eight, so I get an eight X equals negative six, multiply by seven on both sides, seven X equals five, and then add the six, add the six, so I get an eight X plus six, and if I subtract the five, subtract the five, I get a seven X minus five. And over here, if you're factoring by grouping, just so you can see why you have to negate that, you're gonna get an eight X plus six times what's remaining, which is a seven X minus five. And ladies and gentlemen, if you go back through the multiplication of this, you're gonna see I got exactly here. So this is the way I like to do it. I like to think AC method. I like to think my product of two binomials, but if you follow using the prime factorization to understand that, and then just use this negation tip and dividing, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna be able to factor quadratics fast. I hope you enjoyed.